campers and families, welcome to episode 12 of Virtual Companion Camp. So today I have a really special uh, episode to share with you guys. It's with one of my favorite mascots of Houston Humane Society. Her name is Rue. She is right here with me. She is a six-year-old female Papillon. Um, and she has been with us her whole life for six years. Now she has a really interesting story. Um, if you wanna see, I'm going to share, uh, give her a treat and maybe you can see more of her. Come here, Rue. Come here, you want a treat? You can see something special about her is she has only uh, two legs. So her two front legs are missing, as you guys can see. Um, she only has two back legs. So she was actually found on the side of the road by uh, one of Houston Humane Society's staff and they took her to us immediately. And the one thing they noticed is that she was a puppy with her two front legs missing. So what we think is that this is a birth defect from people who were improperly breeding, probably a puppy mill, trying to make a quick buck by breeding a bunch of animals together. And she was born with her two front legs missing. So <clears throat> she was discarded on the side of the road by them because they didn't want to sell them. She was just left on the side of the road basically for she could have died and luckily we saved her. Now I'm going to share with you guys um, some cool things about Rue. Like I said, she's a papillon and she's a very friendly girl. She can, um, a lot of people ask if she has a wheelchair or not. Well, we did try that one time. She didn't really like it because as you can see, she's laying in her bed. And if you can imagine if she had a wheelchair attached right here, she wouldn't be able to be comfortable and lay down. And she couldn't come um, sit in my lap like this either. So we actually named her Roo, which is short for kangaroo because she likes to stand and hop on her two front legs. Come here, Roo. make her walk a little bit more too. Come on, Rue. Here's my little good girl. Come on. <laughs> there she goes. You can see she's really cool. Rue. And uh, so I'm gonna share with you guys some myths about um, spaying and neutering because um, a lot of times people think um, spaying and neutering is something that they shouldn't do. So one of the myths is that uh, your pet will gain weight if you spay or neuter them, but that's actually not true. So you're only, uh, the only reason your pet would gain weight is if you're not exercising them. So make sure to walk them and feed them the correct amount. Um, as long as you're doing that, there's no reason for them to gain weight. Another um, common myth is that, uh, the pet, it's not healthy for them, um, which isn't true either. So spaying and neutering, there are actually health benefits to that. So um, it prevents them for, from getting certain types of cancer. So you um, should definitely be spaying and neutering your pet. Another um, common myth is that your pet's behavior will change if you spay or neuter them. This is also not true. So um, some things that might change are if you're uh, animal marks with their urine or mounts things. That's pretty much the only thing that um, will change once you spay or neuter your pet. Your pet is still going to have the same personality, the, um, the same mannerisms, act exactly the same. So you're still going to have the exact same pet that you had after spaying and neutering. And one of the um, other misconceptions about spaying and neutering is people think, oh, um, I want to breed my dog so that I can get another version of them. Well, um, just like you and me are different from our parents, we have different genes, we're not clones of our parents. And that's the same for um, puppies and kittens. They're not gonna be exact uh, replicas of your, uh, of your own pet. So they're gonna have a different personality. They're going, just like you and I have different personalities than our parents. So the best thing to do is just appreciate um, your pet for who they are and don't try to just create another um, pet by spaying and neutering. 
And the last common uh, myth is that spaying and neutering is an expensive or very um, invasive procedure. So spaying and neutering is um, inexpensive and when you drop them off, you can pick them up the same day. So it's just a one day process and um, they just have an incision um, and Rue um, got spayed, in, spayed and you can see she has a little tattoo marking right here and that's what we do for the males and females we marked them we marked her with the female symbol so um, if she gets lost or anything like that um, a veterinarian will know she's already spayed so yeah they are it's not an expensive surgery it's a really um, especially at Houston Humane Society we offer a very low cost spaying and neutering because we get to do um, so many um, on average we can do uh, over 40 spay and neuter surgeries a day so definitely check out Houston Humane Society's clinic um, to get your animal spayed and neutered and we also offer sometimes uh, free or low cost spaying or neutering for cats and there's um, certain uh, other organizations that will provide vouchers for uh, spaying and neutering. Now, <clears throat> so I'm going to share with you guys today's Wednesday and we did a writing assignment. Um, so the writing assignment for this week was why you need a pet. So I'm gonna read um, today's one of those submissions. So thank you everybody for submitting. So here is what Kennedy said. Come here, Rue. Come here. Come read with me. Good girl. All right, so here I'm gonna read Kennedy's submission about why she needs a pet. So she says, I believe I need a pet because they're man's best friend and a, uh, the most loyal companion on earth. A pet will always be there for you when you need them most. Also having a pet of my own will let them let me experience the responsibility and diligence so I can learn how to take care of another life. With this in mind, I will also be saving my pet's life. They would gain a real home with love and compassion. So many pets need homes where they can experience true love for them. So thank you, Kennedy. That was a great um, at persuasive writing assignment about why you need a pet. So thank you guys for submitting. So the next assignment I'm gonna show you is called an acrostic association. Come here, baby. You want a treat? I have one more in my pocket for you. Come to your bed. So, uh, acrostic association, I have one example right here. Basically, it is a poem, and what you're gonna do is write your pet's name down um, diagonal or vertically like this. And an acrostic association is um, a continuation of the poem using one word for each line, and it just continues on. So this is my example, and what I want you guys to do is write um, your pet's name, and then use some verbs, um, verbs, nouns, adjectives, and adverbs to describe your pet. So here's ruse. It says rambunctiously, optimistically, overcoming. So that's one poem that I wrote for Rue. So you guys submit um, your uh, writing assignment by next Monday for me to read them on next Wednesday and I'll give you guys a new assignment. So now we're going to the next segment, the trick of the day. And today's trick of the day is about feeding your animals treats. So let's go over to Ashley and Monka. Hi campers. It's Ashley, this is Monka. This is our 10 year old lab mix. So Monka, no matter what age I think Monka is gonna be, Monka is always really, really excited about treats. So what I wanna talk about today is how do we give our pets treats and A, not have them grab for the treat, but also B, how do we um, teach them how to be gentle for the future? So Monka already knows sit, so let's start there. Monka, sit. <laughs> come here. I know. Ooh, come here. Sit. So we want to give the treat. 
See, that's what we don't want. We don't want our pets grabbing for it. Come on, go. And we want to give it to our give it to our pet. Now you want to give the treat to the pet, not have the pet taken away from you. This teaches not only patience, but this is a lot safer for our hands, for our fingers, everybody in general. Let's do it one more time. Okay. And they don't have to be sitting for this. We just want to teach them not to be grabby. See? Real gentle. Perfect. All right, guys. <laughs> tuning in um we'll see you guys this friday for another episode it's going to be sweat with your pet so get ready to exercise with us and some pets thanks for tuning in see you guys next time bye